Right, so for question five, a lot of information here. Um, so I've got iron heated with chlorine to form an orange brown. So if you think about the colour, it's going to be iron three, isn't it? If it's orangey brown. Solid A is then dissolved to form an orange brown solution containing that. Um, then I do uh, separate portions of that and do various um, present. Add in silicon hydroxide, you know that from transition metal chemistry. Some excess zinc um, mixture and it gives me a pale green solution. So pale green you should be thinking that's iron 2 plus and aqueous zinc 2 plus ions. And then experiment 3, I've added some potassium cyanide to that. Um, and experiment 4, I've got some added some ethane diamine. So first of all, write an equation for the formation of solid A. Solid A is um, going to be iron reacted with chlorine. So it's going to be iron plus chlorine and we know it's iron trichloride uh, because of the colour for that one. Okay. Right, the next one is bang on uh, your transition metal chemistry. Fe3 plus plus 3 OH minus gives me iron hydroxide, like so. Nothing too uh, crazy there. Ryan equation for the formation of complex iron C. We noted that it's changed colour, it's now pale green, which means I've got an iron 2 uh, complex. So I'm starting off with this boy here, I'm adding zinc, it's going pale green, so I know it's turned in to that boy there. It's going to be Zn2 plus that I form, so therefore I'm going to have to have two of those to make sure it balances out because that's changed by one plus, so that has to, uh, that's gone down by one plus. So I need two of those because the zinc's changed oxidation number by two. Okay. Um, reaction taking place. Well, hopefully you can see that's redox. Okay, I'll just whiz back um, to experiment three now. I'm adding potassium cyanide. It's turned a yellow colour um, and contains a complex iron E. And it's got a molar mass of 211.8. So... I'm just going to put a value of 211.8. Right, so I know it's got 211.8, it's got to add up to that. Iron is 55.8 and cyanide comes to 26. So I'm going to work out the formula. Well, if I do 211.8 minus 55 So 126 divided by 26, Ooh, I think. sorry, that should be 156, that's 156, and that comes to 6 there. So the complex iron is going to be, I've got to get it to FeCn6 like so. Uh, that's what I've got to um, get the final equation to be. Um, now, iron hasn't changed oxidation state. It's plus three here. Each cyanide, cyanide is actually Cn minus. How do you know that? Well, they told me the formula is potassium cyanide. You know potassium is plus, therefore cyanide is three minus. Iron is three plus, therefore overall charge is going to be three minus. I started with it being Fe, let's start with the water complex tonight, 3 plus, so plus 6 Cn minus is going to go to that plus 6 waters I've got to create at the end of it. Just quickly, the type of reaction taking place is going to be ligand substitution for that. I've replaced uh, water for cyanide. Okay, so I'm going to draw some shapes now of FMG, um, which is formed from this iron. Look, if you think about it, th these oxygens are going to be the, the donor atoms, aren't they? It's not going to be those oxygens because they've got a charge on it. It's going to be these guys. So the way to do this, as you know, do your basic shape of iron. Put on 
your ligands like so. You know, you'll find doing this skeletally makes it a bit easier for you if you're happy with skeletal formula like so. Um, and then overall that's going to be a 3 minus. Um, and then you can do exactly the same like so. Um, just to make sure you match up where your forms go, like so, bang on, it's roughly that. And that's also going to be the three months. These, of course, are optical isomers. Um, uh, okay, so we've got the ferrite iron here. <laughs> ferrite contains iron, which is going to be Fe. Iron is in oxidation number plus six. They've told me that the overall charge is minus two. If it's ferry, it's got to have some oxygens in. So it's got to have four oxygens, so it's two times minus two. Whoops, sorry, four times minus two is minus eight. Six minus eight gives you minus two. Uh, right, so I've done this just to speed things up a little bit. Um, I know delta S of the reaction is the sum of the products minus some of the reactants. So I've got my products here, six times charge and five for oxygen plus whatever glucose is, minus uh, six times uh, carbon dioxide and six times uh, water. Do these brackets 1230, these guys add up to 1704. So X is gonna equal that number, minus that number, plus that number. So let's just do that quickly. And that gives me 218. Okay, so moving on to the next one. Um, I need to calculate delta G now. Now we know delta G is delta H minus T delta S. They've given us all the information up at the top here that I just popped in there. Delta H is there, delta S is there. Remember, this is in joules per Kelvin per mole. So I have to divide it by a thousand, which I've done here to give me no, uh, minus 2.56. Temperature, of course, is Kelvin, 298 Kelvin, rather than 25 degrees C. And if you do that, you should get it to be 2955 kilojoules per mole. Why? Right. There's this, why is this reaction not feasible at any temperature? So if we go back to this, delta H is positive. Delta S is negative up here. So that means this term is going to be positive. That is positive. Delta G for a reaction to be feasible should be negative for feasibility, which is not. So delta G can never be negative at all. Uh, right, so it's a slightly odd one now. Um, delta H they've told me is 2879 kilojoules per mole. Um, every year, uh, 3.4 times 7 to 18 kilojoules is taken in by the plant. I need to calculate the mass of carbon dioxide. So first of all, if I do 3.4 times 10 to the 18, divided by delta H for the reaction, um, I need to then times that by six because in the equation there is that's per mole, and in the equation there are actually six moles of carbon dioxide. So I do 3.4 times 10 to the 18 divided by 2879 times by six. That gives me 7.086 times 10 to the 15. That's moles. To get my mass of CO2, I need to times that number by the molar mass of carbon dioxide, which is 44. Um, so that gives me 3.12 times 10 to the 17 grams.